Catherine obviously has a crush on Philip, but he seems oblivious. Yeah, we got the that like you said, the Munchkin and the Catherine, and I'm already starting not to care. And yeah. what made me so much more pissed off is that my seven year old took my phone. So, <laughs> I'm, so I'm sitting on the couch, forced to just watch this movie. Lights, camera, and f- action. Welcome to the I Remember Liking That Movie Podcast. Remember those childhood movies you loved? We're going to watch them again and find out if they're still as amazing as you remember. Let's get ready to join Anna and Jimmy as they go back and watch those movies you remember being oh so awesomely good. Horror movies that scared. Comedy movies that dared. And action movies so preposterously ludicrous that they defied the laws of common sense. Now, here's your hosts, Anna Santos and Jimmy Coates. I mean, I'm not mad at the cast. The cast is phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah damn holy shit yeah it's ridiculous the cast is ridiculous all right welcome to the i remember liking that movie podcast we are still watching christmas movies and next we are watching mixed nuts starring steve martin madeline khan there's like liv shriver in there yeah liv shriver Uh, Robert Adam Klein Sandler, Robert Klein, Gary Rita Shanley, Wilson. Rita Wilson. John Stewart is in it as rollerblader number two. Oh, God. I'll have to look out for that. And the girl who, a natural born killer's girlfriend, Mallory. Juliet Lewis. Juliet Lewis. I mean, a fucking stacked movie. And yeah. the director, she's dead now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to rain on our Christmas movie. Hold on. Let me bring it up. Mix Nuts. Nora Ephron, who I'm not. It's not that I don't like. They're she makes good movies. Yes, uh, she wrote and directed uh, when Harry met Sally. You've got Mail, Bewitch, Julie and Julia, My Blue Heaven. I remember liking that with Steve Martin. Yeah. Um. So I mean, she's made some pretty iconic movies, like You've Got yes. Mail and Sleepless in Seattle, and When Harry Met Sally has to be three of the biggest romantic comedies that aren't uh, like they're She's, like they're not too cheesy they're pretty good i can watch them i can watch Her- when harry met sally probably more yeah that's a little more realistic yeah you've got mail i like better than sleepless in seattle sleepless, sleepless a little, in seattle you know. i really didn't like yeah it's just it got really annoying but she also did a movie <laughs> That has one of my favorite scenes of all time. And I've only watched this movie once. And then I vowed to myself I was never going to watch it again because it was so fucking shitty. But uh, Michael with John Travolta. He plays oh, an the angel. angel when he yeah. goes against fights the bull. Absolutely. T- no, it's oh. when he's talking to someone, a patient in the hospital, and she just he decides to speak Portuguese. And I was like, who was your vocal coach? Your vocal coach? <laughs> who who told you to say it like that? I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. And it but it's my favorite. And I will I will find that clip every year and I will send it to my friends and we all laugh and laugh and laugh. That was a pretty big movie too, if I remember. It was actually. Um now with a release December twenty first, nineteen ninety four. Thank you. Mm-hmm. At least you release it around Christmas. <laughs> On a budget of twenty million. That's a lot oh. for nineteen ninety four. Yeah. But like for what this this isn't an action movie. This isn't uh it had a domestic total of 6.8 million, so it did not do well. <laughs> no. And actually, it opened on a Wednesday and collected 800,000 in its first two days. And while it collected another 2.3 million for the Christmas long weekend, it was only good enough for 12th place. And I, I never got this because me and my family never did this. We never went to the theater on Christmas. Never, never, mm. never. I know for a lot of people, though, it is a big thing. Yeah, no. A yeah. lot of people will celebrate with their family and then go to the movies. Go see a movies, yeah. I or not a... celebrate with their family and do a double feature. And do it, too. Yeah. Yeah. 
It collected another 1.6 for the New Year's long weekend, but that was only good for 16th place. Miraculously, it collected another 1.6 million over the next 51 weeks. Damn. So it did not do well at the box office. Let's go to the tail of the tape. December 21st, 1994. It is a holiday comedy rated mm-hmm. PG-13. Falls in line with like Sleepless in Seattle and When Harry Met Sally and all that yeah. crap. One hour and 37 minutes. Respectable length for, yeah, for, for, for this. For yes. Taglines. Oh, what's his name is in it too? The guy who plays the Santa Claus there. Um, the Santa oh Claus? My. Like the Santa Claus with an E? No, wait, wait, with... The... Oh my God. Where what are you talking about, Willis? Yeah, what am I talking about? Like, give me one second here. It's bugging me now. John Stewart. <laughs> oh, maybe I'm looking. Yeah, Anthony LaPaglia. Oh. Yes. So he's in it as well. Sorry. Taglines. I just saw him at the corner of my um, mm. thing here. All right. So a comedy on the edge. Interesting. That's it. That is underwhelming. <laughs> Synopsis. Philip, Steve Martin, manages a suicide prevention hotline called Lifesavers, assisted by Mrs. Munchik, Munchnik, Madeline Kahn. I do like Madeline Kahn. Me too. And Catherine, Rita Wilson. On Christmas Eve, Philip learns that their landlord, Gary Shanlin, is evicting them from their office. Amid all the unrest, Catherine proclaims her love for Philip. And when a transvestite, Liv Schreiber, and a pregnant woman, Juliet Lewis, enter into the equation, things get even more interesting. Now, that sounds ridiculous, but funny. And given the cast, this sounds great because I love Steve Martin. Me too. And in most my, things. In yeah, no, I don't love all his movies. Mm. I, I don't. My Steve Martin is from the 80s, like Roxanne, Three Amigos. Yeah. What else has he done? But like things like The Jerk and All of Me came later discovering him. He's made some really great movies, but he has made some not great movies. Correct. So there there have been choices made by yeah, him. There have yeah. been choices. Yeah. And there is our picture. It's just Steve Martin wearing a Santa Claus hat and he's wearing a suit with a bow tie and within the white shirt is the rest of the cast mixed nuts. It's not a bad poster. No, I mean, it's it's fine. Yeah. They're really pushing the Steve Martin angle. Yes. And that's cool. This is where it gets not so great. Rotten oh, Tomatoes. Lord. Oh, jeez. <sighs> 31 critic reviews oh. comes in at 13%. <laughs> oh, my. I think we watched a Leprechaun movie with a higher rating. 5,000. So not a lot of audience here. 5,000 yeah. plus audience. 47, which is better than the 13, but not great. No, it's still not great. Critic consensus. Mixed nuts may provoke strong allergic reactions in all but the most undemanding film goers and the most forgiving Steve Martin fans. Damn. You may start with the positive. Success is due almost entirely to the engaging, charismatic efforts of its various performers. David Nusser, <laughs> Real Film Real Film Reviews, 2.5 out of 4. That's not a great review either. No. <laughs> Even for a Christmas comedy, it's blasphemous, delightfully so. Paul Schrote, Esquire Magazine. Quirky, enjoyable comedy with an unknown park- Parker Posey on roller skates and Adam Sandler being charming in a real minor part. Brandon Judell, Popcorn Q, three out of five. Two small players is who you're going to highlight. It, yeah, Parker Posey and Adam and Sandler Adam in Sandler. 1994. Okay. Wow. I like, and I, I like Parker Posey. So, yeah. yeah. It's not the cast that's got yeah. the word. Odd, oddly likable little comedy. Ken Hankey, Mountain Express, four out of five. Interesting, Ken. All right, here's the rotten. You may start there. Yeah, that and that was all. That was that's it. That was all the positive ones that there. Oh there. Lord! Even fans of Nora Ephron knew well enough to stay home and roast chestnuts on an open fire instead. Matt Brunson, Film Frenzy, one out of four. Damn, Matt. 
Wow. The beginning of Steve Martin's non-funny comedies. Efron should know better as well. <laughs> and he did. He made uh, like Grand Canyon, L.A. Stories that were yeah. these drama with a little comedy. And when you're used to like the jerk and the yeah. amigos and all that stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can't. It's hard. It's Even hard his finish. Cheaper by the Dozen, Father of the Bride were very, they were funny. They're a little more family yeah. funny, but they're still funny. Uh, Efron's timing and sensitivity have deserted her, leaving behind only the sentimentality. Derek Adams, timeout. Martin's comedic talent shows no signs of life and is truly abysmal adaptation of a superior French farce. Film four. Hmm. Interesting. Awful. Even worse when you think about the caliber of talent involved. James Sanford, Ooh. Kalamazoo Gazette, zero out of five. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. That's oh, Mizzou, indeed. Terrible comedy with a few amusing moments. Not dark enough on one end, not silly enough on the other. Fred Topol, about.com, 2.5. So many nuts, so few laughs. Caffeinated Clint, movie hole, one out of five. How to take a stellar cast and do absolutely nothing with it. Scott Weinberg, efilmcritic.com, three out of ten. Tell us how you really feel. Whew. Every character shines with such dazzling intensity and such inexhaustible comic invention that the movie becomes tiresome, like too many clowns. Roger Ebert, Chicago Sun-Times, 1.5 out of 4. Wow, Ebert. IMDb. Let's see if they liked it better. Only 14,000 user ratings, but comes in at a a much better (laughs) 5.4. Right on. Ah, you may go. I don't even like nuts, but I love this movie. 10 out of 10, Tyler Shell. Much more sweet than salty. 9 out of 10, Sunday at dusk, prisoner number 97859. <laughs> watch it. Take a deep breath and watch it again. 8 out of 10, call me creative. Yeah, if it sucks, I'm not watching it again. <laughs> Jeez, watch it again. As far as random, warm-hearted comedies go, this one, this is one of the best. 7 out of 10. Miyagi. A solid cast in a very dark comedy. Six out of ten. S.D. Davis, 63. Over the top screwball comedy just doesn't quite make it. Five out of ten. Jeff W.S. Nora Ephron assembles a solid cast for a greatly misjudged translation of a darkly comic French play with a great mismatch of director and material. Four out of ten. Ionic Breeze Machine. Hmm. That was deep. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Three out of ten Snoopy style. Huh? The fuck did I just watch? Huh? Uh... Lord, please no. Two out of ten Archie Leach. Now, what I realized, there were actually for a, one of the lower amount of people watching a movie we've done with only four. There were quite a few reviews mm-hmm. and there were quite a few 10 9 8 7 6 and not a lot of 5 4 3 2 there uh, were a shitload of number ones like a lot so i can believe that you may go first am i supposed to laugh at this funky a worst movie ever ambrosia honeysuckle bad on a biblical scale penelope danger yeah, I'm kind of worried when we start bringing the Bible in. <laughs> right? Lost all my respect for Steve Martin through the through the veil. Sixty nine. So many stars, so little to like. America's Maximus. That bitch Madeline Kahn ruined this movie. I didn't say that bitch, but it said Madeline Kahn ruined this movie. Yasmin Hillary. With three, six exclamation. Six, yeah. I can't even say exclamation. exclamation. There points. There you go. Yeah. Not one, not two, six. Six. All right. Not looking good. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> terrible box office, terrible reviews. Which is like, it's a really great cast. It's a phenomenal cast. Now, right. uh, officially, I have never seen this movie. I know nothing about it. Right. Um, I have seen this movie probably in 1994 or 1995. Yeah. I would have rented it at a blockbuster. Steve Martin. 
probably and i would have been watching saturday night live adam sandler was on yeah yeah so i would have definitely i definitely rented this and i haven't seen it since and i have never seen it and when it was on the list i was like what the fuck is mixed nuts Um, yeah but i'm game i'm game let's see this let's do this all right let's watch the oops Hello, this is Lifesavers. Merry Christmas. How may I help you? I have only two months to live. I'm so sorry, sir. Everyone at Lifesavers is with you. May I speak to a woman? Hello, Merry Christmas, if it's all right to say that. What's your name? Catherine. I want to ravish you like a wild animal. (laughs) Now stop it right this minute. We can't have that sort of thing. Philip's job is solving other people's problems. May I put you on hold while I run to my desk? Uh, You're not calling from a bridge or holding a weapon? No. Good. But unfortunately, he's got problems of his own. I don't know how to say this. My psychiatrist thinks we should break up. I didn't know you were going to a psychiatrist. Well, I'm not actually going to one. I've been dating one for four months. And now it's Christmas. Can we show a little Christmas spirit around here? Merry Christmas! Somebody's not in the holiday mood, I guess. (laughs) A time when the lonely... If you think your husband is having an affair, he is. ...feel most alone. Static again. Hello, hello. I can't hear you. Try clicking the little button. I'm having a problem hearing you. Look, I'm at the end of my rope, and I want to die. Click it, please. Go ahead. I'm very lonely tonight. Is there any chance I could stop by and talk? Well, if you are willing to make a small donation, say perhaps five grand. (gasps) I'm kidding. I came right over. Do you have music? I'm not like you, Philip. I'm not one of those people who's only good on the phone. In my line of work, I deal with all kinds of people. <laughs> None of them are what you might call conventional. <laughs> Dancing with you makes me feel all fluffy. Shall I? <gasps> TriStar Pictures presents. I wish there were someone I cared for who cared for me. Are you a professional ukulele player? Oh, no, I'm a writer. What do you write? T-shirts. Steve Martin. My heart is racing and I'm feeling all nervous and sick. That's the way I felt since the day I met you. I wrote Save the Dolphins. In the new comedy. From the director of Sleepless in Seattle. Catherine was uh, very distressed, so naturally I uh, had to comfort her. Mixed nuts. (laughs) Hello, Lifesavers. May I help you? You are speaking to a woman. All right. There was the trailer. We've uh, looked at the box office, the tail of the tape, and the pre- uh, reviews. What's your prediction? I think this movie is definitely going to um, depend on pace. Because that trailer did not inspire me. But I'm like, maybe when it's like rolling through, if it has good pacing and it has, I'm like, I can see where the jokes could objectively be funny. Mm -hmm. It just, the way they cut that trailer didn't make me laugh. And who knows? It could be one of those movies where it was just way ahead of its time. True. So true. Also, Liv Schreiber, super pretty. (laughs) Yeah. he's Super pretty. (laughs) I love Lufro. He's freaking awesome. Actually, that entire yeah. cast is awesome. That trailer. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> I saw Jolie Fisher pop up and I was like, she's in this? Yeah. yeah Anthony LaPaglia so... was so hot when he was younger. Oh, God. So hot. Such a crush on him. But yeah, no, it's it. I really want it to be good. I have a feeling it might not be. But this is one of those movies. I'm like, maybe you just need to watch it through and it it plays better. Yeah. Than what that trailer showed us. Yeah. If I had to put money, I'm gonna say it sucks. I mean, I'm but if I'm hope it. I'm really hoping. Like there's nothing better than being surprised. Yeah. But, uh, there's hoping. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Well, we are gonna go watch the nineteen ninety four Christmas movie Mixed Nuts with Steve Martin and a bunch of other people that you know. And when we come back, we are gonna review it. You heard them. Movie time. Let's all go to the lobby and get ourselves a treat and then watch a classic kick-ass movie from whenever the one we're about to watch was made.
Did you watch 1994's Mixed Nuts? (laughs) I did. I did. What what was your initial thoughts? (laughs) That was one of the most terrible movies I've ever seen. God. But the sad thing is, like, as I'm watching it and I'm listening to the dialogue, I'm like, this should be funny. Yeah, this it really should have be With funny. That cast and like, I w- when I was watching it, I was like, okay, if I'm picturing myself reading the script, I'm laughing at the script. There was some witty dialogue. It's a great cast. It should have been funny. I think I laughed like twice through the entire movie. Most of it, I just watched passively, and I'm like, there is no magic here. <laughs> Yeah, I did not like this movie. I bought this movie. Me too! Because it was the same amount as it was to rent it. Correct. I want to contact a- contact Amazon and ask them to kindly remove it <laughs> from my videos. <laughs> They'll be like, but you bought it. Uh, I'm aware of what I did. Just take it uh, away. Yeah, do you want a refund? No, no, I watched it. I don't want to, in 20 years, go, I wonder if it's good now. <laughs> because I'm going to be pissed if I watch this again. No, yeah. uh, I did not like it. It was shot. It was shot like a stage play, and it did not work. No, I like the. I, I'm sure the play in France or Deutschland or wherever the fuck it was from. I'm sure it was delightful. Mm. It just did not translate way. I like Gary Shandlin's character. Yes, I like the guy who called the masturbate while he talked to the. <laughs> um, what's your name there? <clears throat> uh, the Rita Wilson. I don't remember her character's name. Hold on, uh, Gracie. No, Catherine. Catherine. Oh, Gracie. Gracie was uh, Juliet yeah. Lewis. Right. Um, yeah, it could have been it could have been funnier if it was so much funnier. I, I don't know. Should have been more R rated or edgier or not this goofy puff piece. I don't know. It was so weird. Yeah. It needed like, to be and not weird in heavily. a good way. Like it yeah. was there was needed to be some character work. I think Madeline Kahn was probably the most honest. Uh and Leave Schreiber. I I was I was into those two characters. This just solidified my oh god. Yeah, they kind of Chandler. seemed like they were in a movie. Everyone else kind of yeah. seemed like they were in a play. And I'm like eh. like it was it did feel very play like and it really did feel like they just kind of set up a camera in a theater and was yeah. like oh do the play and uh, that can work 100 hey, percent. that can I, I i wrote so, uh, a couple notes like oh, i'll get to i'm sure i'll get to it but yeah. yeah i agree yeah this was just it was i think the character choices were misguided for a lot of them yeah. and it it felt really weird and then there was like, I understand why you had to establish the roller, but it was just very, I, it's yeah. so hard to explain yeah, until you watch it. Or watching, like, there were no ha-has, none. I had one ha-ha. Or like a, eh. I had one ha-ha. Oh, did you get one? Okay. I did get one. And it was <clears throat> this scene where Madeline Kahn, like Juliette Lewis is in the bathroom and Madeline Kahn's trying to get in. Oh and yeah, Juliet Lewis had, opens the door, pee. and then they ha- yeah, and then she's peeing behind the towel. Yeah, and that one I ha, <laughs> but that was about it. Like everything else, I was just like, but it's funny because when you listen to the script, you're like, the script is funny. Like the script itself, everything is funny. there was there to work. It just needed to be molded different or tweaked different. Or yeah, something. there were there were choices made, like. I'm sorry, Rita Wilson. I love you. But her character was way too superficial and not way too like frolicking through a field of flowers. There was there was no kind of realness to her because she obviously has feelings, conflicting feelings. She's obviously sad and dealing with the fact that she lives with her mother and she doesn't want to be. But you don't really even when she's talking about when she feels like she's going to be alone forever, it feels so false that you don't have any empathy for her. Like there's no real depth to the character. You're like, 
it feels a lot of the characters felt very caricaturish caricaturesque which i had a problem with because i'm like you're trying to sell me on this like people who want to help thing and (laughs) that are also just having problems but you're not really giving this like full commitment it it felt shallow yeah if you guys are listening to this it practically almost ruined my christmas (laughs) i had to put charlie brown christmas on just to calm down that's how and this is, was a running theme for Steve Martin in the 90s. Like, he he had mild comedy hits, like mm-hmm. Family, like Father the Bride, House Sitter, Bullfinger. But he did, like, we talked about L.A. Story, Grand Canyon, and this piece of dog poo. Uh, <laughs> because Three Amigos, Roxanne, Dirty Rotten yeah. Scoundrels, Planes, Trains, all, all of Me, The Jerk. Yeah, those are great. And then he made not-so-great ones. But anyways, okay, let's go over this Christmas <laughs> fruitcake of a movie. <sighs> In Venice, Los Angeles on Christmas Eve, an ex-con named Felix is being chased down the road by his angry pregnant girlfriend, Gracie. He accidentally accidentally runs into it and damages a Christmas tree carried by two rollerbladers. The opening is fine. Christmas music, uh, Philip, yep. Steve Martin riding his bike to work, the mm-hmm. silly accident. Yeah, it was... It was okay. An argument breaks out among them. A stranger named Philip tries to t- calm them down. They disperse, and Philip picks up the damaged tree and takes it into his office. And this was a running gag of the stupid yeah. tree and these rollerbladers because they go back and get another tree. gets broken. Yeah, and then that get tree gets tree. knocked down. And then yeah. when they're carrying a tree, not the yeah. rollerbladers, Felix, and when they're carrying a tree, the, the rollerbladers knock it down. Like, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Could have so... been funnier. An argument breaks out. Oh, no, here we go. So he takes it to the other. And this is where it starts to feel like a stage play, uh, but like community theater. And nothing <laughs> against community theater. You community elitist. theater can be super good. And it especially can be especially if you're super in a shitty. Can but also I be... expect that from community theater. I'm fine with that with community theater. Not that I go to a lot of community theater. <laughs> I was going to say. When you have Madeline Kahn and Steve Martin and all these other people, you don't expect shitty yeah. community theater. Well, the first uh, scene is like where they're actual. There's actual real conversation and interaction. It's with Madeline Kahn and Rita Wilson in the office, yeah. which is really just a really great apartment and a really great building um, yeah, a with a fantastic elevator. Um, but their interaction and the the establishing of their characters is so surface, and I'm like. Were you told just to be like super pleasant and like extra waspy? Was this the vibe you were told to go for? Give me a little bit of snark because I feel like Madeline Kahn's character needed to have a little snark. You know, give me a little bit of like, you know, an eye roll from Rita Wilson's character. Something. Because all it is pleasant talking and isn't this great and you shouldn't do that. It'll be fine. And I'm like, "I, I don't understand. Yeah, here's my note from uh, uh, movies that do it well that are like stage plays, like Glenn Gary, mm. Glenn Ross, mm-hmm. 12 Angry Men, The Hateful That's- Eight, the Quentin Tarantino movie, pretty much takes place all in one room. They do that very well. Yeah, this there are so like. many good ways to do it. I just feel like choices were made and they were the wrong choices. Yeah. I'm just going to say that. Philip runs a suicide prevention hotline called Lifesavers. Working there with a judgmental widow named Mrs. Munchnik, that's uh, Madeline Kahn, Mm -hmm. and an overly sensitive woman named Catherine. Catherine obviously has a crush on Philip, but he seems oblivious. Yeah, we got that, like you said, the Munchkin and the Catherine, and I'm already starting not to care. And what made me so much more pissed off is that my seven-year-old took my phone. (laughs) So I'm sitting on the couch forced to just watch this movie. (laughs) I do not have a seven-year-old. So when the Reddit alerts started coming up, I was like, oh, there's a new Reddit story? Oh, <laughs> just like half. Because I was trying. I was trying so yeah. hard. I was trying yeah. so hard. I was like, let me be engaged. Let me let me be engaged. And then I realized, I was like, you know what? When I was reporting in for my EI this today, just before watching this movie, I was having more fun doing that than I was watching this movie. Just FYI. I, I have already, I swear, I've probably already by now hit the pause twice to see how much was left to go. And I, I, I hit the pause button regularly to see how much there was to go on this movie. It was Ooh. one of the most 
just <laughs> so boring funny. movies I've ever seen in my life. And I have seen a lot of boring movies. Like a lot. Yeah, this one. This is this is out. Yeah. Yeah. Philip receives an eviction notice from the landlord, Stanley, who is planning to convert the building into condominiums. This is also weird because, like you said, the offices here already look like apartments or condominiums. Yeah. There's nothing office or business about them. They look Not like even they're thing. done and ready to go. I did like Gary Shandlin here, though. He's such a douche. <laughs> he really is. <laughs> Unscrewing the light bulbs, every third light bulb to save a couple and like, cents. And flipping off the exit sign. <laughs> yeah. And just asking the most random questions as he goes, like do, about do they how drink people glass? died. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you do think they, they drink glass? glass? Do, do you think? I mean, but do they? <laughs> He's like, I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah, that was a good interaction. I was like, oh, okay, that was pretty I mean, good. I'm like, yeah, it, it gave you a little false, little senses of false. Yeah, because I was kind of interesting would happen. You're like, oh, okay, we're picking up, and then we're down again. After the thing with, yeah, because I. I literally just had this thought. I was like, because the first, the opening scene, it feels very staged. It doesn't feel like real life. No. So you're like, okay, this is just a random interaction, whatever, over the top acting, fine. And then you get into the apartment building slash office building and it's great. And, you know, there's that interaction with Gary Shandling, who's the ultimate dirtbag landlord, who's just like, ah. Eh. Well, sucks to be you. January 2nd. Peace out. So do they drink glass? Like flipping, turning light bulbs, flipping off lights. And you're like, love him. Maybe this will get better. Spoiler alert. It did not. No. No, it got worse. Oh, longer. Uh, Phil keeps his eviction notice a secret from his co-workers and tries to get his loan officer fiance, Susan, to grant him a small loan to stay in business. Susan refused to grant the loan and breaks up and breaks up with Philip, saying she has been cheating on him with a psychiatrist. And he takes it very well. Pretty well. He he, he just says, oh, okay. Well, she did say she was she didn't want to do it over the phone. She was gonna fax him. But he, but yeah. he doesn't even have a fax. Okay. And I was like, honestly, that's very timely for 1994. And I think that could have actually been funny, but it wasn't. No. No, the hotline is not too busy on Christmas Eve, but they do get a call from a woman who is afraid of the Seaside Strangler, a serial killer who has recently targeted women in the neighborhood, and a call from Chris, a depressed trans woman who wants to visit the office in person so as to get away from her judgment mental family. Why do they keep calling him Arnold? Like Arnold Schwarzenegger because he's bigger? I guess. Like, is there a movie me. that Arnold Schwarzenegger did where he dresses as a woman? I don't know. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm all for family well, picking on individual family members i mean isn't that how you show love that's yeah. how we show love in my family uh, i actually and we don't just concentrate on one person it usually goes around oh the no table. <laughs> you share it for everybody when we had our family reunion one year it's like we love hard i made the the motto of our family we love hard but we mock harder like that's how we show love if we're not making fun of you that's because we don't give a fuck about you yeah and we yeah, don't you're actually not, want you're you not there. considered family <laughs> yeah so, I mean, but I mean that, like, when he said, okay, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I was like. I guess uh, he was bigger than everyone else, but I'm like. I guess. They all but started I was like, that's Arnold, weird. Arnold, I don't, I didn't get yeah, it. Yeah, and then as soon as he walks out, or she walks out, my bad, because she does say in this, I am a woman when she answers the phone. And I was like, oh, okay, so you're fully trans. Got it now. It would have been funnier for Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, maybe. <laughs> I'm sure he'd look very pretty in a dress. I am a woman. <laughs> it's not a tumor. Yeah, it's not. A tumor. I haven't seen that movie in forever. Kindergarten Cop. Yeah, that was yeah. great. Mrs. Munchik's shift ends, but she gets trapped in the elevator as she leaves. She eventually manages to get Philip's attention, and he manages to pull her out. And there's a whole. She starts opening presents. Yeah. Starts playing with the drums and the microphone, karaoke microphone, to get people's attention. Again, this could have been funny. It just fucking wasn't. Funny. It fell super flat. And, you know, Adam Sandler, this is when we're introduced to him because he comes oh, in. Yeah. Apparently, he's a resident of the building. He's taking out his mail. He's carrying a big random tree. I think that was supposed to be a funny prop. Look at the odd thing he's carrying. But I'm like, mm, yeah. not that odd. Like, if he was carrying a mannequin, maybe. Yeah. May that would have been a little weirder. And I would have been like, the fuck is he going to do with that? Because that would funny. Maybe a weird. sex doll. <laughs> Anything. Skis. Yeah, uh, watermelon. 
Have him carry a watermelon. Yeah. What? Something. Anyways, and then have I... him fuck it. That would have been funnier than this movie. <laughs> Look what I'm going to go fuck in my room. Uh, maybe. Maybe. We maybe don't. not. <laughs> maybe not. But yeah. So he walks in and he's got a Walkman on. Yes. He can't hear anything. He's singing along to the Walkman. Madeline Kahn says much Nick is trying to get his attention. And then <clears throat> he kind of moves out and she throws the fruitcake. Yeah. Fucking fruitcake. Because Philip gives her the fruitcake for Christmas. She says it looks awful like the fruitcake I gave you last year. And he's like, well, then happy, Merry Christmas. Have a great day. And so she takes the fruitcake. Then she throws it down. And then eventually it makes its way back upstairs. I don't remember how. This movie is so forgettable. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, how does it get back? Yeah, I think, I don't know. Yeah. Somebody brings it back up. I think maybe Louie, Adam Sandler's character. And we also maybe. get a bit more of Gracie and Felix, and then we find out she wants a more stable man in her life, mm -hmm. not, not him because he's an artist. She yeah. wants a businessman because that's exactly what a businessman is looking for. A 20 year old knocked up chick. <laughs> but I think she has her own business. Like she yeah. has her own shop. Yeah. And she lives in the back of the shop. So she's got her life together. Mostly. Yeah, he definitely doesn't. He does not. No. He uh, bought a Grace... Santa suit. Yeah. Gracie arrives at the. Uh, yeah. Because she's like, I could have sold that uh, Santa suit and got a, a car seat. Car seat. He's like, we don't even have a car. And when you say the joke, it's, it's funnier than when they said when they said, yeah, it's I don't, yeah, the director really fucked up and maybe the actors refused to. I don't know. I, I don't know what direction they were giving or what choice, what choices, who made the choices, but somebody fucked up. Yeah. Hard. Gracie arrives at the office to see her friend Catherine. Felix chasing Gracie also shows up. Gracie hit Felix in the head with a fruitcake, giving him a concussion. So Gracie actually Gracie actually pushes the button a couple times the elevator yeah. starts munch dick and philip are already trying to get out and then they get stuck on the top and they think they're gonna die this could have been funnier Sense. and then i wish they died and the movie <laughs> fucking ended here i was like oh please let them die they were um, never gonna die no then mrs she had to go pee but gracie locked the door and everyone's bounding on the door she unlocks it and they all everyone falls through the door onto each other like you would in a play yeah. Then she locks the bathroom and then uh, they get to the, they're all paying on the bathroom door trying to get it. This sucks because I did not like this movie and now I'm forced to relive this experience by going over it. <laughs> okay, but hold on. So Gracie opens the door, Mrs. Munchnik comes in, then she goes to close the door. They all like barge in. They're all having a conversation about something and then we see Mrs. Munchnik like peeing behind the towel yes behind that which was amusing i laughed yeah. a little bit there was a little I didn't bit laugh, of but it was like it was mm. like aha that's good because her face the face that she made when they all looked over at her and she was just like perfectly calm <laughs> thank you cheese toast yes we did do this to ourselves um, oh yeah yeah we did pick the movie <laughs> Oh, we'll make better choices <laughs> at some point. I don't know yeah. when. But yeah, so I mean, that moment kind of, because everybody just kind of looks over at her. And then you see this perfect, she's just got the towel up. She's very prim and proper. And I was like, that moment was great. Because she's like, I'm still going to have privacy. Even though I have to pee in front of all these people. <laughs> that was funny. And that was the moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I can see this all working as a play i could see this be a play like this would be probably a lot funnier but there's a big difference between a play and a movie yeah yeah and if you want to take a play and make it a movie you have to change and alter and do it a little differently yeah in direction and in acting and i think a lot of people don't realize that because a lot of times i'll watch movies and you know, my friends will be like, oh, that wasn't. I was like, oh, they were theater acting. You can't theater act on screen. No, theater acting on screen, weird. it comes across weird. It doesn't translate. Because there's a very specific way to theater act versus film act. But we can go into my dissertation on that at another time. Let's continue with the movie. <laughs> Philip and Catherine take Felix to a veterinarian friend to get treated for free. Did Catherine go? 
Catherine, yes. Yes, okay. Because Catherine was in there, and then that's when she kind of loses it on after. Right, okay. Felix gives himself dog tranquilizers. Yeah, and this is where we get Rob Reiner as the, <laughs> again, this could have been very as the funny vet. too. Yeah, it could have been um, hilarious. Oh, here we go. And Felix accidentally overdoses on dog tranquilizers. He is taken to a hospital. Chris arrives at the office. Grace opens the door for her so quickly that she accidentally strikes Mrs. Munchnik and knocks her unconscious. Gracie asks Chris to look after Mrs. Munchnik, then leaves. Philip returns to the office. Chris strikes up a conversation with him and convinces him to dance. Okay, I will say the uncomfortable dance yes. wasn't funny funny. It was amusing. Yes. Where he didn't want to dance. Because it starts super uncomfortable. Yeah. Because it's that moment where you're like, of course I would do that embarrassing thing with you to make you yeah. feel better. And then they're like, okay, let's do it. And you're like, hmm? I meant like hypothetically, but okay. So they start and it's very uncomfortable in the beginning, but then they both really get into it. And yeah, by the end, they're really, they're giving a, 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 a dancing performance. Re and a good one at that. Yeah. So so this was, was like, amusing. Oh. Yes. I will better give it than amusing. What, better than <laughs> what has come before it. Yeah. Uh, Miss Munch, Nick awakens, witnesses their dancing and threatens to sue Philip for withholding information of the eviction and inappropriate office behavior. She leaves. Gracie gives Catherine a makeover. Then they return to the office with Chinese food. And also they, they see Louie and invite him up as well because he wrote mm -hmm. a song for Catherine. And obviously he has a crush on Catherine, but it's never really explored in this movie. No, because immediately no. Louie's interest is then kind of transferred to Chris. To Chris. And I'm like, uh, well, obviously he didn't have that much of a thing for Catherine if he's all like, oh, hey, Chris. Yep. Downstairs, neighbor Louie, who has a oh, what epiphany I had, who has a crush on Catherine, joins them. Meanwhile, Philip throws the fruit cake out of the office window and accidentally smashes the windshield of Mrs. Munch's car, just as she is about to drive away. Fellow neighbor Mr. Lobel approaches her with his three dogs and tries to cheer her up. Oh yeah, he was also past her. She reported mm -hmm. his dogs. He was yep. like, "I hope she dies in the elevator and stuff." Like. It, it had the recipe here. Like I, we, I know we keep saying this, and if you watch it, you're like, "How is this not funny?" <laughs> I see why every single actor either said yes to this movie or auditioned for it. I see yeah. why the script itself, yeah, like it's, really good. And then you're like, "Oh, Steve Martin and Madeline Kahn. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll join this it one. It should be amazing." It's and then nuts. you watch the screening with everyone. And then you turn to your manager and you're like, "You're fucking fired." <laughs> <laughs> or your agent how could you let me do this piece of shit <laughs> uh, mrs is. munchik suddenly kisses um uh, yes. robert klein they run off to the beach and have sex there we go i just donated yeah. money to wikipedia again today for their christmas <laughs> it wasn't a lot <laughs> um yeah no i i was watching that and i was like are they are they having sex i was like are there dogs the dogs are all over them. Yeah. Like all in between them, all on top yeah. of them. And Gross. I was like, that's, <laughs> that's weird. But okay, choices. So now I'm screaming at my seven-year-old to bring back my phone. <laughs> she does not. Of course she an does. Hour, an hour later, Felix, having regained consciousness and escaped from the hospital, arrives at the office brandishing a gun. Mm -hmm. Chris attempts to disarm him and gets shot in the foot. Correct. Gracie, Gracie takes a gun and shoots wildly around the office to empty all of the ammunition. Two shots go through the front door and they kill the landlord, Stanley, who had just showed up to try to fix the elevator. That wasn't bad. That wasn't That's, bad. Yeah. It, you just and, have to empty it. And she just starts wildly shooting. Yeah. Then and like, reading this, if you just read this and you're like, haven't seen the movie, like, this is crazy. This is, yeah. This sounds like a hilarious movie. <laughs> It it's should not. be zany. This yeah. movie was not zany. No. No, it wasn't zany. <laughs> <sighs> the sight of the dead man puts Catherine in shock. Philip prepares a bath to calm her down, and they fuck. That's Wikipedia for you. No, it is. That was me. That, I realized that, I that, that he, was you. He, and then he realizes he's attracted to her. Catherine and Philip have sex in the bathroom. That's Wikipedia. Meanwhile, Louie and Chris start flirting with each other. Louie makes up a song for Chris on his ukulele. I did like when he was going to get 
the bandage stuff and all that stuff for Chris. And Chris yeah. is sitting there. He's like, hello. I just want a Band-Aid. Can someone please help me? I'm bleeding to death here. And it was just a nick. Um, yeah. Gracie and Felix disguise Stanley's body as a Christmas tree. They wrap it in burlap and attach the branches of the office Christmas tree with super glue. Everyone leaves the office to help carry the tree and leave it on the boardwalk, along with the bag that Stanley was carrying outside. They encounter the angry rollerbladers from the first scene who recognize Felix and decide to destroy his tree for revenge. Mm -hmm. The tree crashes to the ground and reveals the dead body. The police arrive and ask for an explanation. This it gets this is just this is just stupid. <laughs> Philip <laughs> Philip says the gun is Felix's, but then Gracie confesses to the crime instead. Not wanting Gracie to go to jail, Felix grabs the gun, runs to the roof of the building, and threatens to commit suicide. Philip must be a real lifesaver now and convince Felix not to kill himself. He makes an emotional speech about Christmas, which convicts, convinces Felix to climb down and face the consequences. Meanwhile, the de detectives have been investigating Stanley's bag, but, which luckily Gracie said, oh, this bag was his. Was his. Yeah. So there they find fishing line and kelp and seaside strangler weapons of choice, revealing Stanley to be the serial killer. No follow up, no investigation. Though this is his. Maybe it was fucking hers. Yeah, they're horrible police. And then officers. it's like you just killed the seaside strangler. And one second they have motorbike helmets on, and the next second they don't. And I'm like, I'm getting mad. And this is just. <laughs> and they're like, and she's like, Gracie's like, is there a reward? And they're like, yeah, two hundred fifty thousand. And then she's like, how much do you need, Philip? And he's like, five thousand. He's like, oh, that's a lot, <laughs> but I'll give it to you anyways. Yeah. To pay off the debts. Then promptly, and then she goes into labor, giving birth at midnight on Christmas Day. The scene parodies the nativity of Jesus. Philip then proposes to Catherine, and she accepts. In the end credits, Felix finally fulfills his dream of becoming a mural artist, painting a mural depicting everything that happened on the eventful Christmas Eve. And it looked like a fucking eight-year-old painted that thing. Correct. Which I'm sure I'm, was on purpose to make like he's to show he's a shitty fucking artist. There, there's a reason, Felix. But I'm like, give me some of his art beforehand. Like, have him show something to Gracie and be like, babe. And her be like, oh, sweetie, that's a good try. Yeah. Ooh, or that could have been a running so joke. Hard. Yeah. His art, and everyone be something. like, that sucks. And then he gets the mural at the end with the by Felix at the end. Yeah. Also, I think it's really great that they're when, when they're trying to smuggle the body tree through the streets, Gracie is dressed as uh, the Mother Mary. Yeah. Jesus's mama. Lends itself to the whole thing. I, coincidence. Uh, very... <laughs> It was totally accidental. It's a smart choice on that. When uh, Catherine is gets her makeover, which really she just puts on a more revealing dress. Super yeah. pretty. Yeah. And she got a little bit of makeup put on and her hair put up. Yeah, I'm I would like, banged her on the bathroom floor right beside the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Uh. Hey, sometimes you just got to, when you're about to undress someone to get into a bath, yeah, because kids, they're in shock. Kids. Yeah, because they're in shock. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, dude, really? I think, I, I think you're kind of taking advantage of her. <laughs> this is a little ick. Because I was like, And no. you're going to use that as a joke. Like someone else goes, really? I thought she was in shock. Yeah, like and then when, her, man. what's her name? Jolie Fisher, Susan, comes to the door and she's like, I want to talk to Philip. Is he here? He's taking a bath with Catherine. Yeah. That, I was like, that bad delivery on that line. Too bad. The delivery on lines was, well, good delivery of lines was very few and far, far between. Yeah, and it was yeah. it was very. I'm like there there was no, there was no good pacing to this movie. None whatsoever. No. I no. I don't know why they picked. It's like they picked a romantic comedy. No, not even a romantic com like a historical romance pace. And applied it to this movie. And you're like, they don't match. A lot of bad choices were made. But I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. They made the movie. Well, this is our movie. <laughs> so what's what's your score? My score is skip it. Skip this motherfucker. Now, if you're a glutton for punishments. And you kind of want to see what we're talking about. Stream it. Don't pay four ninety eight for it. Buy or rent. Don't do that. If it ever pops up on a streaming service for free or on TV, 
by all means, watch it at that point. Satisfy your curiosity. But there is no reason anybody needs to watch this. And it makes me sad because the dialogue is great. The actual, like, I think the, the actual idea. script was really good. Yeah. Thank you, Cheese Toast. Cheese Toast says, I'll be honest, I was never going to watch it. And uh, don't. valid. Don't. Don't do it. It is not worth anybody's time. Not It doesn't do anything other than show you that Leif Schreiber looks amazing in a dress. Kind of mad about it. So pretty. Well, my score is this movie sucks balls. This movie sucks. So if there was a line, a row of balls, like a uh-huh. mile long. Yep. This movie would suck all those balls. Amazing. This is. Oh my god, this movie sucks so bad. I, I I mean I can't I didn't even want to write anything witty. Not that I write a whole lot of witty. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but you do write very in-depth mm-hmm. analyses. Yes. I didn't um, even want to yeah, no, there's it's, it's plain and simple. Skip this movie. This movie is horrendous. I'm mad that it's in my because you know, I started buying some 4K. Uh, yeah. but I still buy movies that I'm not gonna pay for. Forty dollars, thirty dollars, twenty dollars for a four K. I'll buy digitally, yeah, in my Amazon account. But now I have to see this this box art every time I go through, and it <laughs> it makes me mad. <laughs> no, it's it it awkward. it had an amazing cast. Yeah, this there the script dialogue had you just had to tweak it a bit, and you need it to be much different pace, maybe a little edgier, or if you don't want to go edgier, like you said, a little zany. Little, yeah, little, just a little cuckoo, whatever the fuck. Yeah, I don't get it. Play into the like craziness. She's in a, yeah, play into the craziness that's in the script. They were all playing it straight, and you're like, no, you gotta have some wackadoodles. Like, otherwise, it's all one note through the entire thing, so you're not getting any of the laughs. Yeah, no, I can't stress this enough. Do not watch this. <laughs> Like we're gonna do the thing at the end of uh, uh, just before January there, where I think we're gonna go through all the movies that we did. Like, yeah, was well, our favorite? Was our biggest surprise? What movie did we hate the most? Well, guess fucking what? Unless <laughs> there's something really horrendous on the horizon, I think we only got like three or four movies to go. Yeah, and they're all Christmas movies, so I, I can't see one being worse than this. I think Mixed Nuts might be the worst movie we've reviewed this year. I'm gonna have to go over the list one more time. I yeah, I I, I can't remember all the movies we yeah. watched, but I don't know if there's a movie that was. I'd watch Leprechaun two before I watched this. Actually, me too. Maybe not Grizzly two. Did we do Grizzly two this year or last year? I think we did it this year. Hmm, might be a big fight for the worst movie. We yeah, did. maybe they do it out because <laughs> that was a shit movie too. Although I did like what's his name being the French fucking bear hunter. <laughs> At least that was amusing. <sighs> no, the, I there was nothing I really like. There were a couple amusing parts, and it it just made me more mad that everything the director's not an idiot. She knows what she's doing. Yeah. Like they're not my favorite movies, but I she made When Harry Met Sally and You've Got Mail and all that. So she yep. knows how to direct. I don't know what went wrong here. Is something went horribly wrong, like really horribly wrong. And maybe this is where she she learned all of her lessons. It's or they were like, you know what? Let's try something different. And then we're like, oh, that fucking sucked. Well, yeah. we could do well, that again. <laughs> she directed Julie and Julia, which I loved. I don't know if I've seen it. She directed You've Got Mail. Sleepless Julie and Julia was for good. Sleepless in Seattle. Which she directed did. My Blue Heaven. I think she directed. I don't I think No, she, she didn't direct My Blue she Heaven. Wrote it. She directed Michael. She wrote My Blue Heaven, I think. Yeah. Yes, she wrote it. Okay. Yeah, she but I, I'd watch Michael before this. Oh, fuck. Tell me about it. Yeah. I'd watch oh. a lot of things that she's directed before this. I, I'd watch so much stuff before this. This was this was not. Yeah, I don't plan on ever watching this again, <laughs> whether I own it or not. Look, I was expecting it to not be the greatest. I will fully admit that. Like, I was like, I, I'm, but I'm sure I'm. With this cast, Nora Ephron, it's got to be at least a little funny. Yeah. It was not. And I kept waiting for the joke. And the joke would happen. 
and it wouldn't land. No. And I'm like, who the fuck? Who's making the choices? Who decided that the character should be like this? Who decided that we're going to shoot this scene like this? Like, was there a discussion? Was it collaborative? Or was this all just Nora Ephron being like, you know what? Let me try something new. She should not have. This, this, this did not work no. at all. And I'm mad. And I'm <laughs> that I watched it. Yeah. I'm mad that I own it. Yeah, I'm very mad that I own it. Well, but I was everyone... like, rent for four ninety eight, buy for four ninety eight. Yeah, that's what I mean. And now on the off chance that it was like ahead of its time, a diamond in the rough, more understood. Now, yeah, it was none of those. <laughs> none. Nope. Nope. Well, thank you for coming back to nineteen ninety four with us and previewing and reviewing mixed nuts. If you watched it because of us. We sincerely apologize. <laughs> <laughs> and if you it's were true. waiting, and if you're waiting on us to see whether or not you wanted to watch it, again, you have two giant skip it. Do yeah. not watch this movie. You will be pleasantly enraged. <laughs> All right. Well, again, thank you. I hope you're having a good Christmas. And oh, wait, I didn't get the stupid thing ready. What stupid thing? But blame it on the, the out the out video. Oh. Blame it on mixed nuts again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, until the next movie we remember liking. Congratulations. You just had one of your childhood movie memories vindicated. Or they just eviscerated it. I don't know. This is a generic one-size-fits-all type of ending to the podcast. So thank you for listening, and please join Anna and Jimmy next time for another episode of the I Remember Liking That Movie podcast. If you dare to go back and watch that movie you remember liking, 